The difference between wheelchair racing and all the other sports is that very often you're on your own. Many of us couldn't bear with the boredom, but it's all about repetition and refinement of skills. Practice makes perfect, so they say. I'm Dr. William Tan and I do wheelchair racing. I was afflicted with poliomyelitis at the age of two. Growing up was very difficult because my parents could not afford uh, leg braces, crutches, uh, wheelchair. So I spent a lot of time in the childhood days uh, crawling around. But I was very determined that I must learn how to walk on my own. I discovered that I was quite interested in sports, but the school system was very protective. So I spent a lot of time in the classroom, looking out of the windows and watching other kids play. At the age of 17, I met Mr. White Baba. When I went to the stadium, he actually offered me his wheelchair to go round and round the track. I've been in wheelchair racing for about 30 years. By 2005, I completed more than 100 marathons. I was very determined to reinvent myself. I was doing some research and discovered that there was a marathon in Antarctica that nobody has ever done it before in a wheelchair. And in my further research, I realised that someone has actually done a marathon on every continent and set a world record. So in 2005, I embarked on my first attempt. I completed all the six continents, but unfortunately I failed in Antarctica. My racing chair fell apart. The temperature was just too extreme. I was very disappointed, but I was not willing to uh, give up this dream. I went to another place to acclimatise. I actually went to the North Pole to do a marathon. I was out in the snow for 21 hours and I had a lot of frostbite. But the experience actually uh, equipped me for the big race in Antarctica. I finally succeeded in December 2007 and it was a new world record on the wheelchair. Fastest time to complete seven marathons across seven continents. In April 2009, I was racing the Paris Marathon and I started to bleed from my nose. And at first I attributed it to the spring weather, but I continued to bleed throughout the whole 42.2 kilometers. I was diagnosed with stage 4 leukemia. Very devastating because all my life I have always think that I'm too big to fail. I'm a doctor, so I take good care of my health. Not only that, I'm a Paralympian. How could I fall sick? I compete at the highest level. The decision about going for treatment was a very hard one. I was contemplating between uh, living up my 12 months, maybe spend time with my friends, my loved ones, my wife. But then I remembered that I must give it a try. Like all the other marathons, I give it the best shot. Why can't I do so in this race against cancer? I think sports has fortified me in a way that when it came to cancer, I had that kind of emotional strength, the mindset to manage this challenge. Prior to my leukemia, I had been competing in the Boston Marathon. For six years, I've been absent. So this Boston Marathon will be my comeback race. It's going to be a very hard race, but I have trained very hard for it. Although I'm not as fit as before my leukemia, but I'll give it my best effort. Sometimes I get very disappointed that how come my life is so full of barriers and difficulties and setbacks. I do ask a lot of questions, but I also recognise that it's so important to know where to stop asking questions and know where to start moving forward. It is wishful thinking that life will be so ideal, a bit of roses, smooth sailing, there will be turbulence, there will be the big waves, typhoons, but adversity draws out the best in us. 
tough times never last, but tough people do.